Okay, so in this lesson, we're going to talk about cropping your images inside Photoshop. Now, two of the most common reasons to crop a photo are, one, to remove unwanted elements. Perhaps you took a photo, and maybe on the side there's an element or a person standing there that you didn't necessarily want in there. So you could crop your image down and go ahead and remove that. Another reason is to create perhaps a more appealing composition. Or you perhaps want to focus your attention on a particular aspect of your photo, and you can do that by cropping it. Now, using the crop tool, let's go into the toolbar, and you'll notice right down here it's got the crop tool. And what you do is you simply just click and drag, and you notice I can freely draw any size box here that I want. And once you release the mouse, it's going to give you the crop window with all these transform handles all around. You can grab any one of these. If you grab the top handle, you can certainly drag it up and down and resize it horizontally. Grab the vertical handle and increase or, increase or decrease the size this way. You can also grab any of the corner handles and freely modify the entire box like this. Now notice when we drew the box, we've, the rest of the image, or the outer area of the crop box, darkened. And that's because of this right up in here. If you look in the options bar, you'll notice we've got a shield. And that's what it's called. You can simply uncheck that if you like. But what it does is it, it's a visual aid to help you decide how you're going to image, or give you a better preview of how your image is going to look after it's cropped. And it is at 75% opacity, so you can faintly see your image through there. You can certainly take it all the way up, so you can really get a good idea of what your image is going to look like cropped. But it's probably a good idea to see a little bit of your image, just so you can tell right away if there's a part that you're cropping out that you don't necessarily want to, and you can just resize the box accordingly. Now, once you have dragged your box over an area you want to crop in, you simply press the Enter key, and it will go ahead and crop your photo based on that selection. But notice, I'm going to go ahead and undo this. Let's go into the Edit menu and go do Undo Crop. Now, before we do this, I'm going to go into the Image menu and go to Image Size, and you'll notice what we have here is a 12 by 8 inch at a resolution at 150 pixels per inch. And when I go and make a crop, let's go and grab that Crop tool again. I'm just going to drag a box out, and I'm going to press Enter. So let's go into that Image Size menu and see what happened. You'll notice that the dimensions have dropped according to our crop settings, but the resolution has stayed the same. So what it did is basically narrowed the dimensions, throwing out all that uh, extra information, but still keeping the same resolution of this file. So that's one way of doing it. Go to the un let's go to undo that, go to our edit, undo crop. Now another way of applying a crop is by doing it from within the options bar. Let's say you've got a very specific size that you want to crop an image to. You can do that by entering your dimensions inside of here. So let's say if we're looking at, as we saw earlier, a 12 by 8, let's say I want to make it roughly half that. I want to make it 6 by 4. Well, we can go in here and enter a width of 6, and we'll enter a height of 4. And we can also input a resolution if we want to change that resolution. So I'm going to go ahead and let's say I'm going to crop this for the web. So let's go, I'm going to go ahead and make it 72 DPI or PPI. And when we go in here and drag, you'll notice that it's keeping that proportion right like that. So no matter what I size this to, so notice in here, if my box appears to be just very, very small, if we look at the ruler here, it's roughly two inches. That doesn't mean that's what the crop is going to be when I apply it. When I press Enter, you'll notice what happened. If we go into the image size, it has now basically resized that document and resampled it to the 6x4 at 72 dpi that we wanted. So, makes no difference what size I drag this image to be. I just decide on an area I want to be that particular size, and it will go ahead and make it. There you see that. Go and gives me the cropped image, but it's still the same size that we wanted it to be. Now let's say you wanted to crop your image based on the actual dimensions of your file. Like we said, we got a 12 by 8, 150 pixels per inch. We won't say we want to keep that size, but still crop it in. So what we do is we're going to click this button right here called Front Image. And it's going to take that information and input it right in here, 12 by 8 at 150. So no, no, no matter what area I drag to size, you'll notice, and I'm just dragging the mouse all over the place, but it's still keeping in that proportion. So let's say I drag an area out, and we'll just kind of cover this area here. And you'll notice I did earlier, I can drag any one of the handles, but notice my middle handles are gone. That's because we're keeping a proportion to that size we input. But you can also rotate it. If you click right outside here, you get a little bent arrow. So we can rotate that composition, and it might give us a little bit more interesting or dramatic 
image there. So let's go over here and take that and put it right about there. And when I press enter, we're going to get the same size document. If we go under image size, you'll notice that we're still in the 12 by 8, 150, but it's basically narrowed that area. But what happened was we cropped that area and then it resampled it up to fit in that designated uh, size or that specific size that we set up. So it's resampled it. It basically invented pixels in there. So as you, as if you remember, I was talking about in the resolution and image size in the previous lesson, it invents those pixels. So when you're doing this, if you're going to use this front image, do be careful about how big of a crop you make or how small of a crop you make because it's going to invent pixels. Now one more thing I want to touch on is the process of resizing or scaling your objects inside Photoshop. Now here I have a file of an apple. You can see it's on its own layer against a transparent background. Now let's say I wanted to scale this object. Well, I can do that a number of different ways. I'm going to go into the Edit menu and go down here to Transform and I'm going to choose Scale. And it's going to give me the Transform box or the free Transform box in here and I can simply grab any one of these corner handles and just resize the object accordingly. But you'll notice it doesn't do it proportionately. So if I go over here and undo that, in order to scale something proportionally, you just simply add the shift key when you're dragging those handles, and it will keep it in proportion, as you can see, as I'm scaling it. And there are a number of other features here as well you can access by going into the Edit menu. Another quick way of getting to these transform features is holding down the Control key or simply right-clicking right on that element when it's selected, and you'll get all those other features as well. So we can also rotate the object, just like that. You can also distort it, skew it actually. Just by grabbing any one of these handles, you can skew it in either direction you want, just like that. Simple act of skewing. You can do perspective, or, or distort rather, allows you to basically freely transform any, any one of the corner handles to do whatever kind of transformation you will need. And of course, there is the perspective, which gives you a perspective depending on which way you push any of the corner handles. So it's a good way of uh, resizing images that you're going to put on uh, the side of a building or something like that. And perhaps one of my favorite features, in th and that is the warp. And this puts a grid on your object and it allows you to basically freely transform the object and do all kinds of weird things with it. This has been used for a retouching tool. You can achieve very interesting effects with this, but you can grab any of the corner handles or any of these handles here and manipulate the object around, clicking inside the grid and manipulating it. All of that works just as well. And you can, of course, rotate it 180 degrees clockwise. You can flip it horizontally or flip it vertically. Just do all these transformations while you're in that transform area. Now, one what quick way I get to all of these features is if you press Command or Control T with the object or with the layer selected, you'll get the free transform box, and you can grab any of these handles and scale it and do whatever you like. But you can also move outside the area of the box, and you notice we get the rotate handles. So you don't have to go and select the rotate. You just move out, and you can modify it any way you want. If you hold down the command key, you can go into the distort mode and grab any of these handles and distort this feature. So a lot of these features are available right on the fly to simply using these keyboard shortcuts. So that is how you go about resizing objects inside Photoshop. In the next lesson, we're going to jump in and talk about how to generate selections of objects.